Hello and welcome to this video covering the spinocerebellar tract or more precisely I should say the posterior spinocerebellar tract because we're going to be focusing mainly on that one. So we're going to try and simplify this as much as possible. It's a tricky tract because there's lots going on but we can start off by drawing a cross section through the spinal cord and a dotted line to represent the midline so we can see where the tract goes. Then next up we need to draw something resembling a muscle because this tract is all about limb position and movement and we need to see that information coming back from the muscles the tendons and the joints and that information is collectively called proprioceptive information and this is of non-conscious type so we're not aware of this information it's being used uh, non-consciously unlike the proprioceptive information carried with the dorsal column medial liminiscal pathway which is of course conscious because it goes off to the cortex and is processed there so some major differences between this pathway and that one is that this spinocerebellar pathway is ipsilateral and involves two neurons and the dorsal column medial liminiscal pathway involves three neurons and is contralateral. So information here is coming from muscle spindle fibers and Golgi tendon organs. That's going to tell the cerebellum a lot about the state of the muscle in terms of muscle length and the level of or state of contraction. And that neuron, the one in blue here, the first order neuron has a cell body pinched off to the side. That tells us that it is a pseudo unipolar neuron. And that's going to come into the ipsilateral side and synapse in the dorsal horn of the gray matter onto sensory neurons and that's going to take place at Clark's nucleus so it synapses onto Clark's nucleus and Clark's nucleus extends as a column throughout the spinal cord between the levels of C8 and L3 so should information come in between those levels then everything's fine it synapses at segmental level should it be below L3 then of course it has to ascend first to where the lowest Clark's nucleus is in the column for information coming in above C8, I will mention that later, that's slightly more complicated. But for now, that's enough, and we can say that the second order neuron then leaves the spinal cord, ascends up in the posterior spinocerebellar tract, ipsilaterally, that's the yellow one here, and it will go into the cerebellum. Three routes into the cerebellum, of course, the superior, the middle, and the inferior peduncles. This information is going to travel into the cerebellum via the inferior cerebellar peduncle and it's going to travel into the anterior lobe and to regions which are called the vermis and the paravermis. So that's our posterior spinocerebellar tract. Now there is a separate tract that travels to the cerebellum which carries information from above the level of C8. Now I said I would come back to this. This information is carried with a named tract called the cuneocerebellar tract and that carries the same type of non-conscious proprioceptive information but because there is no Clark's column or Clark's nucleus above the level of C8 it travels in its own tract but we can group it here just for ease of understanding altogether as the posterior spinocerebellar tract. So quick summary then we have a two neuron pathway entirely ipsilateral entering the cerebellum via the inferior cerebellar peduncle and going off to structures called the vermis and the paravermis. So now would be a good time to compare the posterior spinocerebellar tract with the anterior spinocerebellar tract. The main difference in terms of function is that the anterior spinocerebellar tract is much more involved in receiving information from descending motor tracts. So it tends to come in to the spinal cord and synapse onto anterior horn cells, the lower motor neurons there, rather than synapsing in the posterior horn cells which are entirely sensory like the posterior cerebellar tract does. So the main role of the anterior spinocerebellar tract is in movement using that proprioceptive information to inform movement by synapsing with those lower motor neurons. It's also worth pointing out that the anterior spinocerebellar tract crosses over and ascends on the contralateral side of the spinal cord unlike the posterior spinocerebellar tract and but eventually it crosses back over to the ipsilateral side so it is an ipsilateral system but it crosses over along the way it's also worth now mentioning what happens when we get a lesion to the spinocerebellar tracts where we get something known as ataxia and this is a loss of coordination 
okay that pretty much summarizes the tract bye for now subscribe to Sultan Brain Hub for more videos to help explain the mysteries of the brain